Welcome back, everyone, to the Legends of Sport podcast. I'm your host, Andy Bernstein. We are all deep into an exciting NFL season, so it was fun to take the Legends of Sport podcast to a terrific venue called the Watch Me Sports Bar in Long Beach, California. Owned by Jax Diener and her partner, it's a welcoming sports bar for women to come watch live sports together. Their grand opening was the same night as the opening ceremonies of the Olympics, and there was a line stretched as far as the eye could see. We at Legends of Sport want to support their mission, and we'll be back for sure. Thanks to Jax for taking the time to sit and chat with me on this episode, as well as to our partner for the event, Monica Madrid, the founder of Football is Sexy. Two great conversations on this one episode. Big thanks to our sponsor, VIP Tickets, for helping to bring this episode to all of you, and to our friends at Saki High for providing their delicious product for the evening. Enjoy this episode, folks, and as always, I'll see you on the backside. Welcome, Monica Madrid, to the Legends of Sport podcast. We are on location at the Watch Me Sports Bar in Long Beach, uh, co-sponsored and co-hosted by you and your Football is Sexy platform. And I'm so excited to be here because we've been wanting to take the show on the road in L.A. We've been in other places. So thank you for co-hosting this event with us tonight for Thursday Night Football. Absolutely. And thank you for having me. We're here in Strong Beach, better known as Long Beach. (laughs) There you go. Um, And I love it. And I love that you came on the road and, you know, supporting all of us. You know, Watch Me Sports Bar, as you Mm -hmm. know, is 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 um, the first woman bar out here that mm-hmm. that really emphasizes women i um i know that she she plays the nfl there's no women in the mm-hmm. nfl really i mean other than the right. referees but yeah. it, you get what i'm saying yeah. so i love that we're here and i love that we're talking all things sports and thank you for having me of course absolutely thank you for being here so let's get into your story a little bit let's right? do it tell me about why football is so important to you okay why you started football is sexy and why we're here tonight Wow, well, that that is a, <laughs> a, a a question that I love answering because it all surrounds my father, mm-hmm. and um, I the love for the game co- came through my father, mm-hmm. Joe Madrid, mm-hmm. and um, you know he was a diehard 49er fan. Mm-hmm. Um, he was born in the Bay. Mm-hmm. Um, I always forget the name. Uh, not Candlestick, but was it Co- Kizar? Look, Kizar, Kizar Stadium. Kizar Stadium. Where my the dad, Niners yep. played, yeah. So my dad grew up there. Wow. And that, he, that's pre-Candlestick. Pre-Candlestick. Yeah. And he wow. would tell me stories of how he would get nickels. He'd sell, like, bottles and stuff, and he'd get <laughs> nickels to buy his seats. Yeah. So it bled <laughs> deep for my dad. Uh-huh. And when he had me, I had a feeling he might have wanted a boy, but mm-hmm. he got me, and he's like, oh, <laughs> shit. I don't know if I can cuss, but he's like, you know, I'm taking her anyway. I'm taking her anyway. (laughs) And um, he ended up taking me anyway. And, um, you know, my parents were young parents, so they divorced early Mm -hmm. when I was one. So I would, you know, get to see him Mm -hmm. and fly back and forth. And so um, part of being with my dad was always sports. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So we're San Francisco Giants. We're Niners and all day Warriors and with Mm -hmm. a huge emphasis, (laughs) emphasis on the 49ers. (laughs) I always say like, I feel like I grew up in Candlestick Park. That's awesome. And did you play sports as a kid? I did. I I was a a athlete for sure. Um, I loved sports ever since I can remember. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually was blessed with two fathers, right? So Mm -hmm. Joe was my biological father. He was like the Mexican machismo St. Frank Sinatra to like, you know, Smokey Robinson kind of guy. Right. And he was my football baseball guy. Uh-huh. And then I had my hippie dad who was like Jewish and like Led Zeppelin <laughs> and like, you know, hippie love and all right. that. And he was a soccer guy. Mm-hmm. So I was surrounded around sports. Mm-hmm. And then my mom was actually a dancer. So I've had quite wow. quite the life. And I'm, I was really blessed to have three parents. Mm-hmm. But the sports... Um, I mean, I remember playing flag football in ninth yeah. grade. Um, I was a pretty good basketball player. Mm-hmm. In fact, there's an interesting um, um, thought about that. Is I remember when I when I um, I broke four records in high school as as a as a guard mm-hmm. uh, as a point guard. Mm-hmm. El Medina Vanguard's yeah. in the house. Okay, didn't know you had those skills. Oh yeah, right. don't get it twisted. <laughs> yeah, no, I could play, and I I loved basketball. Yeah, I uh, hated volleyball, but I loved basketball, mm-hmm. and I remember when I graduated, thinking, mm-hmm. well, what am I going to do now? Yeah, and I remember it literally went through my mind that. Mm-hmm. 
I can't make money at sports, so what am I going to do? Mm, interesting. Yeah. And it was sports or music. Uh-huh. And because I knew I couldn't make money at sports, mm-hmm. I chose music, mm. which is a whole nother, whole other thing. a whole nother thing. Yeah. Um, yep. And so look at us now. Yeah. Look at us now. Now you can make money yeah. as a woman who plays sports. So mm-hmm. that's showing my age clearly. Well, okay. But, but you, you, but, but you know, we're kindred spirits on yeah. that. I mean, I remember before the WNBA started and I've had many conversations on the podcast Nancy Lieberman's been on the pa- podcast, and Mar- Myers Drysdale, other women who did not have anything to aspire to yeah. post college, maybe the Olympics, right. but nothing professional. They had to go to Europe, right. and that's when the leagues were first even starting in Europe. So, you know, as a young girl, I can I can relate yeah. to to what you're saying because yeah. I've heard that before from many yeah. women, and. Now we're in, you know, in an era where women's sports is absolutely thriving. I mean, <laughs> beyond thriving. I don't right. even know what a, what a superlative is beyond Bursting, thriving. For Bursting, for sure. Bursting. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, look what happened at the WNBA finals yeah. this year and um, how many people watched that. And we're in a bar that was completely packed that day yeah. for the game five, right? Yeah. Which is unbelievable. So what is the mission? Of, first of all, how do you come up with the, with the name Football is Sexy, right? Mm-hmm. Because... That could go either way, it right? Could. That it could go could. either way. And I had I'm, some pushback. Okay, so yeah. let's talk about that. So, so you know, when I when my father passed of cancer in mm-hmm. 2014, mm-hmm. Um, it was obviously devastating, um, and I couldn't go to another game without him for for a while. Mm-hmm. And then when I decided it was time to get back to to being live and in person, and I could hear him being like, "Get back out there," mm-hmm. and I knew I was going to get back. So right before I went. Um, back to the, my live games, mm-hmm. I, I really started thinking. And, you know, when he died, I, I went through all his things. And you're going through the grief. And mm-hmm. I'm his only child. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I went through this, you know, pretty much alone. Mm-hmm. And I realized all of my memories, all of my favorite memories, favorite pictures were all wrapped around football. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, 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 and baseball, but mostly football. Yeah. And then I was like, wow, like, I'm so thankful for the game. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful that he taught me the game. And Mm -hmm. now, as you're older, you're realizing how much it takes to teach that game because it is not an easy game to learn. Right. Um, And then I went to the next thought, and I'm like, what if I didn't know football? How would my life be different? Mm -hmm. And through all that process, all the amazing friendships, relationships that I've had Mm -hmm. because we first started talking football. Mm. So football is one of my best, best friends, Mm. right? Mm -hmm. And so then it took me to, what about the people that don't have a dad like I did, Mm -hmm. don't have a parent or somebody in their life to show them the game? They're missing out on so much. Mm -hmm. And so it was then I decided I have to teach this game. Mm -hmm. For fun, for free. So I put it up on Facebook right before one of the seasons started, and I said, hey, if you want to learn football, I'm here to teach it to you. For fun, for free, come have drinks, champagne, pizza, like, let's do it. Yeah. And um, then I was like, well, what am I going to call this? <laughs> and it, without hesitation, it was, like, just, like, football sexy. Wow. Like, there was no thought. Yeah. It just literally came out of the sky. Interesting. I'm going to say it might have been dad. I'm not <laughs> sure. But... It was like football is sexy, yeah. and I don't do anything half ass. So I'm like, well, I got to have shirts, mm-hmm. and how am I going to teach the game? Mm-hmm. And at that time, I broke the, the basics of the game down to 12 steps, mm-hmm. um, which is actually a nod to also my, my, my sobriety. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I decided to do that because I, it, without my sobriety, I, w- I wouldn't be where I'm at. Yeah. So, I totally so I did relate. 12 steps, yep. and um, 40 women showed up. Wow. Okay. And I had the wherewithal to have it taped and videotaped. And Uh so when I took it back and I realized, like, I had so much fun teaching the game. Mm -hmm. The questions were hilarious (laughs) and great. Yeah. I mean, you it was it was so much fun. And when I went back and watched it and I'm like, I got to do this. Yeah. I got to do this. And yeah. so Football Sexy was born. Yeah. And then now we have the first only app to ever teach the game mm-hmm. for fun, for free. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. we have, we're doing our live events. We have our social media. We have our apparel. Mm-hmm. And we are, we are doing big things. Yeah. And you're at a place where, you know, they're embracing women, coming to bars to enjoy not just women's sports, but men's sports. Right. 100%. I think it's safe to say, I mean, I, I'm a father of, of 
three daughters, right? Mm-hmm. And I used to take my daughters to watch the Sparks play. Yep. And then Angel City when they came along, of course. And, you know, to, to be a dad and bringing your daughter somewhere. But, you know, a lot of women are not comfortable going to bars mm-hmm. with each other to watch men's sports. It's just not, it seems a little bit, you know, well, I don't know. Doesn't They don't fit sometimes, right? Well, there's, so there's the avid fan, right? Mm-hmm. So there's women like me who breathe football, mm-hmm. okay? And, and sports, let's just say sports. And what people don't realize is that when we go to a bar, mm-hmm. we want to watch the freaking game. <laughs> right. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. I don't want your number. Don't buy me a drink if it comes with you talking to me during the game for three hours. I don't want it. I don't want it. Yeah, I hear you. Send me the drink and keep going. I'm down. But, like, if you want right. to talk while I'm watching the game, it's not going to work out. Yeah. And so there's so many women, but the difference is usually it's, like, one within the circle, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So it's one, and they would wish they had more fans, and this is part of, like, our – our mission Mm -hmm. is to bring women fans together Mm -hmm. so -hmm. that they do have someone to go with so Mm -hmm. they can travel together because I with 43,000 whatever followers Mm -hmm. ask me who went to the game with me last year at the (laughs) NFC championship Niners versus Detroit Mm -hmm. ask me who went with me who went with you nobody (laughs) nobody because you know why because why one because who's going to spend the money yeah they're not as diehard as me yeah Two, I don't want to go with you because you're not as serious as I am. Mm-hmm. I so you. you, so this is a thing for the women fans. Uh-huh. I, I bet if there was like some women out there that are listening, they're like, "Yep, speak it, yeah. preach it," because I talk to a lot of women, uh-huh. and and they're like, "Exactly." Yeah. And so that's part of being uh, a part of football is sexy. And what is so cool mm-hmm. is watching the women connect through our page, mm-hmm. watching the women connect through our live events, like we've done with. Penny Toller, our yeah. friend, yes. le- WNBA legend, right. owns the ice, uh, doesn't own the ice house, but runs it with Johnny Buss. Right. So we've done a lot of events there, and mm-hmm. these women are now friends mm-hmm. and literally traveling to games together. Mm-hmm. That is what I want on a global scale. Yeah. That is what I am working for. It, it does nothing but warm my heart to mm-hmm. see it happen in front. And what, do you, what, what ideally would you love to see from the NFL? Would you love to see them in – like reach out or have they reached out already? They haven't. Because, you know, the fan base is not just men, men watching NFL football. You go 100%. There, and, and it's not just women who are going along with men because they're the girlfriend or the wife or whatever. Right. There are huge packs of women. When huge. I go to Rams or, or Charger games here in L.A., I'm right. sure when you go to Niners games or wherever – Big, big groups of women going. So 100%. you're speaking to those groups, but the NFL needs to embrace that. I agree. I have so many ideas mm-hmm. for the NFL. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm on the ground floor. I've been an avid fan forever, and I can tell you what's missing. I can't give you all the secrets <laughs> no, right now. Not yet. But I'm telling you, yeah. I, will, I, will, I will say that exactly what you're talking about is what and you would think I work for the NFL because I'm so such a huge fan right. of the NFL and what it's done for my life. Yeah. But there is something that they're missing, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and yeah. I have the secret sauce to that. I got so, you. So I'm hoping that one day they embrace um, football is sexy. There was a moment I saw one of your videos, which, which was amazing, right? So you're on Kelly Clarkson's show. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden... Jerry Rice comes on, right? And it, I thought it was just going to be like a testimonial, like, hey, you know, you go girl kind right, of thing. Right, 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 right. Tell, tell everybody what Jerry Rice actually did that day. I was shocked too, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, what? They're like, yeah, Jerry Rice. When she said Hall of Famer, yeah. the first thing I was like, is this Joe or yeah. Jerry? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so when I saw Jerry start talking on the monitor, I'm listening and yeah. he mentions my dad and I'm, I'm getting emotional. I can still get emotional thinking course, about it, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah. That was a moment. Yeah, that was beautiful. And then... I didn't even say what it was yet because I can't get through no, it. No, I got but it. But what he I, did I, I was he said, we are giving you two free tickets to the Super Bowl. Right. And I had never been to a Super Bowl. Unbelievable. Yeah. And, and that was the game last year, right? Minus the score. With your team It was team a in dream it. come true. Uh, yeah, it's because a beautiful moment. I'm a diehard 49er fan. And, yeah. And it was just like, it just happened so quick. And yeah. my instant thought was to just look up. My, my other dad had passed too mm. just recently, oh. both dads. So yeah. it was just like, mwah, mwah, like yeah. 
Oh, Monica. Yeah. I mean, I felt it when I watched the video. I could see, I could see, I see you getting emotional ah. now. And you should be because it was such an incredibly beautiful moment that had to be guided from somewhere else. I'm, I'm sure Ooh. of it, right? Shout out to Kelly Clarkson <laughs> and her team. I'm so sorry to be. It's so weird because so much time has gone by. Yeah. And I've been so busy because, I mean, even after the Super Bowl, I've been busy, busy, busy. Yeah, yeah. And so I really. I haven't had a moment to really just reflect. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's where um, the emotions are coming from sure, now. Is yeah. I, I is you took me back to the moment and, mm-hmm. and you because it's happening. So you're well, past. Because it, it hit me right here, too, because I, I could put myself in your seat. And, you know, my dad passed and, and our connection was really over sports, mostly hockey, but also baseball. Not so much football. We weren't into football in New York very much. Mm. But we were big hockey fans. Went to, like, every Ranger home game since I was eight years old until I went to college. And, um, you know, I, I, my whole life was, has been around sports because of my dad. So right. I can relate to, to what you're doing and, and your mission. And we'll, we're here to support you, Monica. So you have been you amazing from yeah. day one. Thank you. And you, Thank you, I have to say this, like, and I'm sure anybody who knows you even way longer than me will agree that you have such a good, kind spirit and uh, you've done you. so many things in your career mm-hmm. for you to turn the page yeah. and give back. It's so amazing. Well, thank you. I feel like, um, you know, this is the second mountain of my life, I mm-hmm. like to call it. David Brooks wrote this amazing um, book, The Second Mountain, about, you know, attaining all this stuff in your first mountain and any success or any notoriety or whatever, which happened to me, and I was very lucky for that to happen. Now it's time to give that back, yeah. you know, and I'm giving it back through the podcast, talking to you, helping Jax with her bar, you know, whatever we can do. Yep. So we're here to help. I love it. <laughs> and I'm here for it. All right. I'm here Football for is it. sexy. Let's it go. It really is. <laughs> it really is. Let's go. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you. Well, I'm so happy to be here at the Watch Me Sports Bar. I have one of the owners here, Jackie Diener, otherwise known as Jax, right? So I'm going to call you Jax from now on. So Jax, tell me about how this whole concept started to have a women's sports bar here in Long Beach. Well, first of all, thanks, Andy, for coming here, being here at Watch Me. Appreciate you and no, being part of this. Happy to be here. Um, you know, many decades ago, and I'm aging myself, but uh, <laughs> I was in a, a sports bar every Sunday with my friends trying to watch NFL games mm-hmm. and feeling heckled and just that we were in the wrong place mm. and we shouldn't have been there. And we don't understand football. We <laughs> don't know strategy and all the things. And I would come out of those Sundays saying, I'm going to open my own sports bar one day. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was way too young at that time. I had no money. I had no idea how to do such a thing. Yeah. And so my career took me all over the place. Uh, but then the, the time kind of became now. And when Jenny opened the sports bra up in Portland, mm-hmm. I glommed onto her and said, I want to do what you're doing mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. And uh, we kind of talked off and on for a little bit and uh, realized that she wasn't quite ready to franchise. And my timeline was speeding up. <laughs> and... We spoke with a franchise owner and a franchisee. He Uh understood both perspectives, and we walked away from that conversation with uh, why would we pay someone else essentially to go do it? We should do it on our own. Yeah. So the next day, I opened it up. Oh, boy. We opened the business. Wow. What? And was this pre-COVID? It was 2022. Okay. Uh, 2022 was was the first conversations with Jenny uh, Wynn at the sports bra, Mm -hmm. but 2023 September is when we started the business. Yeah. And why Long Beach? Well, Long Beach, well, first of all, we live here. Mm -hmm. um, And I moved down here from L.A. Mm -hmm. um, And that was about 16, 17 years ago. And just love the culture down here. Mm -hmm. I love the energy here. There's a vast park and rec system here. And a lot of athletes have come up through that system. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're in between OC and L.A. proper. We're right off the freeway. It's just all the things. And so... uh, and that there's a very large LGBTQ plus community here mm-hmm. as well, which is supporting us. So mm. it just made sense yeah. to, to open it in Long Beach. And amazing. And you found this incredible spot, this venue. What was this place before it was the Watch Me Sports Bar? This was called Playa Amor, which okay. was a really well-known and beloved Mexican restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, Chef Thomas Ortega is great. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was ready to move on to other projects. And... 
we happened to we knew that he had made that public and uh in some way and 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 so we actually came here to to go have a beer <laughs> or a margarita yeah. something like that at the bar we bellied up and i turned around and i saw this arc and i thought there's outlets up there yeah. and i could see tvs up there yeah. and i can see us making this into a sports bar so yeah. at that point we started pursuing this space and it kind of took its time and yeah. went through a lot of ups and downs but ultimately we made it happen right i mean an incredible roll of the dice so to speak i mean to open a bar of any kind right but a bar that really is uh focused on women as a clientele women's sports but you also embrace bed sports like let you know when I first heard about the Watch Me Sports Bar, I thought, oh, they're just going to be watching, it's going to be women watching women's sports, but it's not, right? It's a safe and comfortable place for women of every type to come watch all sports. Everyone and anyone is welcome here. All ages are welcome here. Right. I want those kids coming off the field, uh -huh. the court, whatever, and coming in here with their team and mm -hmm. family members. Yeah. Um, I want the guys who just want to come in to have a, a beer and, and catch a game. It doesn't matter whether it's women's sports or men's sports up mm -hmm. there. We want everybody in here. It's it's about inclusivity in this space. Absolutely. So yeah. if we're holding true to our mission, then everyone is welcome here, and that's absolutely the case. That's beautiful. So another one of your brilliant ideas was to have your grand opening the night of the opening <laughs> ceremonies of the Olympics. I mean, let's not reach too far to the stars, right? Yeah. Um, did it live up to your expectations? That was insane. Yeah. Uh, the grand opening. Yes. I mean, people told us they waited in line four hours oh to get my in, God. which is some crazy cool dedication yeah. having not even opened our doors Incredible. yet. Um, and, you know, back in September of 23, when I started the business, I was looking at the calendar and thought, what, what's going to be that key date? What What is it that's going to really be that thing that I want the grand opening on? And it was July 26th. Yeah. It was the grand opening, uh, the opening ceremony opening of the Olympics. Opening ceremonies, yeah. And I thought, how can I not do that? Yeah, yeah. And then everyone and everyone, anyone and everyone <laughs> was telling me, you cannot open a restaurant under a year. Yeah. And I said, watch me. <laughs> and um, Hence the name. The name yeah. has it proved itself over and over again throughout the process yeah. and continues to every day. It's yeah. always coming up. I love I love the name because the name is almost like rebellious in a way. It's like, yeah, I can't do it. Watch me. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, I it's kind of been my credo for my entire career that everyone told me I would never succeed. As a sports photographer, you never make money as, in sports photography. You're going to have to choose something else. I was told that from day one when I went to college. And, you know, 45, six years later, you know, I think it was it turned out pretty good. Look but, at you. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So let's talk about football is sexy, okay? Yeah. So you get introduced somehow. i got to find out, how did Monica Madrid, like, enter your radar screen? How did that first happen? Oh. I think we have a mutual friend who uh, kind of floated Monica out to me a while ago mm -hmm. and said she's got football is sexy going on. And I said, okay, cool. Well, this is before we even had this space. Yeah. And I said, okay, cool. Well, we'll have to chat. And um, as it kind of became closer to football season, we were open and, yeah. and things were moving forward. We were like, hey, we got to make this happen. This would be the coolest partnership. Yeah. And it just makes sense. Yep. So there, you're pretty much the official bar of football is sexy. I would I'm think. I'm pretty proud of that. That's pretty uh, amazing. I mean, it, they're on the on the backdrop over here. So right, it's, we're right next to each other. <laughs> it's fantastic, yeah. Jackie. I wish you the best of luck, or Jax. I should call you Jax because we are friends. <laughs> Jax, we I are. wish you the best of luck um, and the best of success. And and we at Legends of Sport, you know, I got three daughters, so I, I have to preach to you that women's sports and and women involved in sports in any way in business. Um, mean a lot to me and a lot to what we do here at Legends of Sports. So you can count on us anytime. I mean, we had a backdrop made, so now we got to keep coming back. You got to be back all the time, <laughs> every week. I, mean, I really thanks, appreciate Jack. you and of the course. support. So thanks for having me. Super today. fun. Thanks and, for uh, being here. Yeah, and it's Thursday night football tonight when we're recording this, but we'll be back for other events post football season, into baseball season, into whatever's going on. It's so great. you can count on us. I love it. Great. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thanks, Jack. Cheers. We had a lot of fun on this episode. Thanks to Jax and all the great people at Watch Me Sports Bar for hosting a great event. Follow them on Instagram at watchme underscore sports bar. If you're in the L.A. area or plan to be, 
It's definitely a great place to watch a game with friends. Big thanks also to our partner for the evening. Football is sexy. Follow Monica and her friends on Instagram at football is sexy. A great community of women who are NFL fanatics. Thanks to our friends at Sake High for providing their awesome product. They can be found on Instagram at Drink Sake High. And our sponsor for the evening and this episode are great friends and supporters at VIP Tickets, the only place to go for all your ticketing needs in LA. Follow them on Instagram at VIP Tickets. Thanks for tuning into this episode and for continuing to support the Legends of Sport podcast. Please tell all your friends to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Legends of Sport, and our Instagram, at Legends of Sport, and my photography can be found on Instagram, at ADB Photo Inc. Big thanks, as always, to our producer, Carlin Barker, and our editors, Addison Xiao and Sean Gosser. Thanks again to all our loyal followers, and we'll see you again next week for another great episode on the Legends of Sport podcast.